Well, hello and welcome to Jimodesm. And we are here in Satisfactory. And we are beginning a new adventure. Where I teach you how to get started and how to do everything. Um, ideally in Satisfactory. Brace for impact, ladies and gentlemen. This feels safe. I'm glad we have a seatbelt thing. And there we are. We have successfully landed. I wonder if we're the only one who landed here. Who knows? Planetfall complete. Please ensure the integrity of your multi-purpose exploration suit is at 100%. Ah, fresh air. Efficiency first. Alright, so we have dropped down and we have collected the pod we came with and also equip this thing in case we meet any threats. The next thing you want to do when starting is collecting basically anything that comes into your way. So a good thing to do is to just, is to just hold your E key whenever you're walking anywhere. In the beginning, just to catch all that stuff without any... Uh, work. Next up is of course clicking the V key to get your scanner. And here we can see where iron is located. We will want to find iron and we can clearly see it's uh, this way. Unfortunately it's still the quickest way to run and then slide jump. So you slide by running and clicking a C key or whatever crouch key you have and you will perform a slide. And when you're sliding, you're clicking space and you will jump. Watch out for <laughs> scary stuff. Alright, so here we are. We have a hostile. What you can do to not get hit by these is simply jump and stab it a little bit when you get the chance. We can also slide jump to get close to it. Sometimes it will get you. But you can actually strike it downwards. And here you can see, we got it. Hog remains, very nice. Now, we didn't look for copper, but this is copper. Whenever you see materials uh, on top of a mine, you need to remove it in order to use the mine. And you will want to collect any type of mineral and thing you can find, because you will need it at least for research. So we just caught that thing on top there. We'll just take some more leaves. Spam around there. Look, there we had more pale berries. Very nice. We will need the food because we will take damage. Check your scanner again. We have iron. This is a pure iron source. Do note carefully. Oh shit. There we go. So, here we have an iron source. These resource deposits on top of your mine is always pure. But then you can look on the thing underneath and you can see this is pure. For mines, this means that a miner will grow up much more material than if it were a normal or if it was an unpure source. So, it's very good to, uh, well, use pure setups, use pure sources. We just catched some limestone here. Apparently we have that in our close vicinity as well, which is quite useful. If you really don't want to fight them, you can hide on some high place. But I think it's quite easy to go over them and just stab downwards and you'll usually get them. Ooh, on top of there you can see we have a little snail thing. We want to go and pick this up later. It will provide us with a power shard, which we can use to overclock and underclock things later. So if you see any snails when you start your game, uh, pick up all the snails. Now I can't pick up more leaves because I've been picking up all along. Uh, and this is because if I go to my inventory, you can see it's, uh, it's kind of full. It's definitely time to build the hub. The hub, we need to kind of get started here. So we will just click the Q key to get your well, building areas. And here we have D hub. And we can just uh, rotate it around until 
we are happy and we can go walk into it easily. We still have some space to build the other factories. It's very easy to remove this thing and place it again if we need to. So we're gonna have it here. The absolutely most basic hub is now constructed. You have unlocked hub feature manual craft bench. We will need to delete some uh, leaves there in order to pick up this power slug. I'm just gonna pick it up and stuff it in our inventory. Very nice. Collect all the food you can see. Here we have some weird material, bulk seed, why not? Pick it up, pick everything up. You will use it for research. It's good to do a lot of research around your base, but if it gets dark or if you wanna go into a cave or something, remember to turn on your flashlight by clicking the B key. Breaking news from Earth. Widespread chaos and mayhem. World president urges all citizens to do their part and harvest alien artifacts. So this thing is the weird sound effect that might have been bugging you. If you have something bugging you in terms of sound effect, it will never stop. You'll have to pick one of these up in order to, you know, not listen to it. Harvest it. Unfortunately, it's the only way. Uh, we can just leave it there. Um, just pick it up so it won't talk to you anymore. Um, it is not implemented yet. It has been in the game since the beginning, but you still can't use them for anything. By the way, there are spiders in this game. Now, there weren't any in this cave, but there are spiders. So if you're scared uh, of like, if you think they're really creepy, then you should probably turn on uh, arachnophobia mood, which they actually provide in this game. And uh, the cats will be replaced with the creepy cat gifs um, stalking you instead, which can be more terrifying. In any case, we have now explored, collected all sorts of stuff. And we can now go into the craft bench. And here we can see we can craft some stuff. Like, for example, we can make iron ingots from the iron ore we have picked up. Inside here, you have some research. This is your research hub. And you need to research in order to climb the tech tree to get access to more parts. And uh, you want to do this, so we want to unlock these. Uh, we're just going to throw out some of the leaves we have in our inventory so we can go and produce some iron ingots. And you can just hold or um, click spacebar or click the crafting button and it will just craft them for you. So let's craft iron ingots from all the iron we have. All right, now that we have done that, we can craft iron rods. And if you remember, we need 10 of these just so many to unlock the hub upgrade one so select milestone insert the materials and upgrade hub wow expanded now we can go into the hub upgrade two select milestone and now we can see in the upper right corner uh, the materials that we need in order to upgrade i have the materials on hand so we will select and craft them. For upgrade one, what we got was actually a new thing. We already had a crafting bench, but now we have a equipment store or workshop. So in the equipment workshop, we can place it down close to our hub. We can walk in here and we can do things like another Xeno sapper if we lose ours or a portable miner, for example. We can craft that. And it's good to have a portable miner. So let us craft a portable miner. So how do we use the portable miners? Well, we can just walk up to this uh, iron deposit, equip our portable miner, click mouse one, and it will start mining automatically. Super handy indeed. And then we can just pick up the materials it collects instead. Very easy. We don't need to catch it ourselves anymore. So we got our materials, so we will upgrade it to hub 2. And we can just shift click to fill it up automatically and just click upgrade. Very nice indeed. So we are still very bare bones, but we can now do copper ingots. So let's make copper ingots from all the copper we have collected so far. Now make wires out of those. When you have done that, you can make cables out of some of them. 
Let's walk over to our equipment storage and make another portable miner so that we can use it for the copper. You know I said we have a power source now. Well, we can burn some leaves and other stuff in order to fill it up and get some power. We just walk up to it and fill it up with some leaves. And now we are getting power. The only thing we can make, that's smelters. So uh, if we have smelters, we don't need to craft the ingots ourselves. The ingots can be crafted automatically. If you want to align this properly, you can rotate it with mouse wheel. And when it's straight, you just hold control and it will snap to nearby buildings. Then you can go into the build menu, select the power line and connect it up. And there we are, we're connected to power. We're gonna make iron ingots, so we are going to insert all the iron ore we have in here. We do need to set up the correct recipe for it to work. If you don't know where we have copper, you just hold down V and select copper ore. It will scan and you will find it. You can see this indication here. Insert it here and connect up the power. Unfortunately, we can't have both connected at the same time. So we will click F and dismantle the power line between the first one. So we can connect the copper ingot one. So we can get some copper ingots too. Go into the hub and now you can see what is required for hub upgrade number three. And you can just fill up the materials you already have and you can now see in your upper right corner which ones you'll need. And after this upgrade, things will be much more easily and automated. And there we go. We can now upgrade the hub. Now we can already select our fourth upgrade, select milestone, and we can see what we need. We already have the capacity to create some concrete, so we go into this menu here. We've made some concrete by hand, very nice. So we will now create a power pole. And the power pole is necessary to connect up several things to the power line. So we can connect up both these smelters. Now we also have the first steps of automation. Always check your build menu to see what new things you can produce. Also check the equipment workbench if you missed something there. And of course the crafting bench to see what we can produce newly. Here for example we have reinforced plates. Produce two of these. With two reinforced plates and a couple of cables we can make a constructor. If you don't have the materials and you want to know what materials you need, you can click the plus icon in the upper right corner. Then you'll get the to-do list so that you can collect your materials very easily. We can now put down our constructor here and we can snap it by holding control. We can then add a little conveyor belt between them so they are automatically connected. Then we can connect up this building to the power pole as well. This thing produces copper, so we can automate the production of wires here. I would however prefer to make some iron plates, so we're going to switch up the smelters, the copper and the iron one will change places. We can go and get some ore from our portable miner. We can then go back to our iron smelter, insert that and we can now see that the ingots come out automatically and go into this machine. Now, they got stuck here. And that is because we haven't set up the recipe. So we can either make iron rods or iron plates. We are going to begin with making some iron plates. We'll need 75 iron plates to produce. Enough to reach the next step. As you can see in the milestone in the upper right corner. Let's go and get some of that copper. And there we go. Remember to pick up things as you go. Sometimes this thing will be empty. Then you'll just refill it with some more fuel and you'll get more power. The cables and concrete we can easily produce by hand. It's so little in these early stages. And there we go. That should be the last one. We can just put it here and we can finally upgrade the hub. So here we have some nice conveyor belts. Now we can go and select the hub upgrade number 5, so we finally can get started here. So, 
Here we can see some cables and some concrete. Not very much concrete, we can do that by hand. We can clearly see that we need to produce the rods here automatically. So let's switch the recipe for this machine to iron rods instead. So we can produce them much faster. Then we can see we'll need 50 wires. Well, in order to have some 50 wires, we probably want to automate the process a little bit. Once some power lines are full, you'll need to connect them up to some other lines and connect those poles up to other machines. That's how it works. We're just gonna slam together some new uh, screws and make two more reinforced iron plates. Now you can't place things where it's clearance. If it's yellow, it's encroaching some clearance that might not look good, but it's okay to place it there. But if it's red, you can't place it there. So we'll need to place it a little bit further away. Then we'll just draw this line here. You can see it's yellow. It slightly clips into this power pole, not visually, so it's absolutely okay. And now we can set up this to produce wires. When your smelters have turned yellow like this, it probably means they don't have any more iron in them. So just fill them up. And there we have it. Just fill that one up too. Now we shall see if this is enough. Almost. All right, there we go. Upgrade. If we have problem with our power capacity, we now have an additional biomass burner, which we can connect up to more machines in order to produce more power. Very handy. We can now automate our factory a lot more. The most important thing in this upgrade is actually that we got access to the Miner Mark 1. The Miner Mark 1 does require one of these. Let's pick up this miner. See if we need some more concrete. We'll need 30 limestone in order to create 10 concrete. So just collect some of that there. Then we'll just bring it back, slap together some concrete. And we can now finally afford the revolutionizing Miner Mark 1. So we can just put it down here. Connect it up to a power supply. The Miner does roughly the same as the portable Miner. However, the difference is you will get an automatic output from it, so we can directly insert it into a smelter. Very handy indeed. So what we need to do now is get our basic setup going. We need to have the smelter and the miner connected, so we can get automatic iron and copper ingots, as well as some automatic concrete limestone. Oh, and if you manage to damage yourself, just click the tab, equip one of the food and left click and you'll eat them and you'll get back some health. All right, so now we come to the first time we actually need to dismantle something. Click F and then you'll hold control on all the parts you need to dismantle and then you'll just left click or hold left click. And there we go. These parts are now dismantled, which means we can set them up again but connect it up automatically. So we hold control to align it there. We have a smelter. Then we're going to add a constructor. We can't build it like that. So I guess we're gonna put it right there. Connect up the other ones to power. This is iron, select it. This one will make iron plates for now. Just connect these up and they will start working. So. Now we get some automatic iron plates here, super handy. Now we just need to do the same for the copper. So go into build menu, click one constructor, one smelter and one miner mark two. Very good. So the only thing we need is a portable miner. Good, so we are going to craft a portable miner. Now we don't have enough iron plates and that is easily solved by going here and picking up some iron plates. Right, so what we need now is just bringing power to the copper area. Stretch the power line as far as you can, so you don't waste more materials than necessary. 
because uh, at uh, Fiskit we do not waste. Here we have our miner. Now we could of course have... Uh, we didn't need to make one actually. I forgot that. But we need one for the concrete anyway, so it doesn't matter. There we go. Put it down. Add some basic concrete here. If you ever need to craft anything when you're out working, you'll just go here and make a crafting bench. And here we are, making some concrete in the field. We set up the miner. Now if you look on screen, you can carefully see when we are holding control to align it, there are two lines. One that aligns the building and one upper line that basically aligns the belts. So if you got two lines, you can connect the belts. And if you only got one line between the belts, you can connect them. But if you only got one belt between the buildings, um, you can necessarily not connect them because it can be so that the angle of the conveyor belt would be too steep. Here we can see this produces 120 copper per minute. And this is a pure source. If you have a normal or impure source, the amount per minute is lower. That's why you should opt for pure sources if possible. In this stage, it doesn't matter when we have really simple setups like this, but in the next episode we will do some more advanced setups and it will matter later. And there we blew our fuses. That means we don't have enough power. Here we can see the power production does not reach to the consumption and we'll get a fuse that gets blown like this. So, to fix this, we need more power production. We will now connect up the other biomass burner. Inserting some leaves in that and turn it on. And now, power should be going excellently well. Now we have the copper ingots coming in here and we're going to make some wires out of this. Under organization, we have storage containers. So, if we want to produce more than 100, we can store them in a container. However, we don't want to run over there if we don't have to. So we are going to draw a conveyor belt with the material to our base. And remember to always build them a little bit up in the air so you can walk under them. Otherwise you will need to jump over the conveyor lines all the time. And there we have a storage container. We'll just add one temporarily here. The earliest setups you will make will be temporary. You probably will remove all of this later to make some more efficient setups later. Here you can see we're slowly getting up to too many iron plates. So just to be safe, we are going to place a container here so that we can connect it up. So we just can set and forget. And we've got one container with that and one container with wires. Now what we need to do is to set up some automatic concrete. So if you don't remember the recipes, which you probably don't, just add one miner. We don't need a smelter, we need a constructor. Okay, so we need one portable miner. We already got one over there. We need some iron plates. We can pick them up there. We need to have uh, 24 screws in order to make two reinforced iron plates. So slap that together. And there we go. We should be able to afford this now. So, pick up the miner. We can add a miner mark. One here. We can add a constructor. Conveyor belt. Hook it up to power. Now we need to uh, hook this power up to some other pole. Then we'll need to connect up one of these to these. And now everything should be connected anyways. One thing that can be pretty handy if you want all of a certain resource in your inventory, you hold control and left click and all of them will just pop into your inventory. And there we go. Power has been saved. Set this up to make concrete. Now you can see this is working fine and producing power and this is not working because the fuse doesn't work. This is because these energy producing units are not connected up to the same network. No, 
You can see this is connected over there and to the iron and this is only connected to the concrete. So they don't share capacity. We can connect up these two power lines from these two machines. And now they are the same power setup, which means that they will be able to together uphold the entire network's um, consumption. Very handy indeed. So let's see what is required for upgrade number six. Select this milestone and we can insert all the materials we need and you can see it was a good thing we automated all these parts except the rods. We can set up another miner completely with another um, smelter and constructor and make rods from that but right now we are just going to switch the output of this machine yes we're just going to select produce iron rods and that should be quite sufficient indeed and we can finally reach the upgrade oh what was that do you see? Congratulations, you have unlocked building space elevator, building biomass burner, part biomass. Motivational message, congratulations, you succeeded in every provided task. On behalf of Fixit Incorporated, I thank you for- And there we go. We have now upgraded the first levels of the game. We have some basic production going and we can now soon reach some more advanced building and research. So if we see here we now got biomass. Biomass is so extremely handy. It's actually turn off your entire factory because we will now be making biomass. Biomass is much more efficient to burn than just leaves. So let's make some biomass from leaves and just insert it into the machine. Amazing. We will of course automate this process later, but for now we just made a little bit of biomass and you can see it burns so much slower so we don't need to waste our preciously picked leaves. Now what we have unlocked is we can produce our own biomass burners to make more power if needed. Very handy indeed. We can also produce the space elevator. The space elevator is a big sacrificing uh, altar thing, kind of, actually. Uh, and you'll need it to progress further into the game. But as you can see, it's quite expensive and nothing we need to care about right now. So, next up, we have base building. And here we have foundations and all that cool stuff we'll need to make our base look acceptable. We have logistics, where we have conveyor, splitters and mergers. And a lot of our cool things we will be looking at next time. But now we have successfully been able to set up our, well, base. And we have some automated production going. We have also unlocked a very cozy home, as you can see here. We can now live in here-ish. And there are some really fun <laughs> easter eggs, like Productive Packer Deluxe. And here we can play some very fun, productive games. Which is of course very important. And not at all a waste of time. Oh my god. Not stressful at all. Ah, not at all a waste of time, but that is something you can do now. So hopefully you have enjoyed this little early setup here. And next time we will be able to look at perfect iron production and stuff like that. So stay tuned because this is a tutorial series, but I hope that this little first video have gotten you comfortable with satisfactory and its basic components so that you can have a nice start. In any case, thanks a lot for watching and do stay tuned for future tips and tutorials in satisfactory. This is your host, Jim Odesim, and we're signing out.